Hi, everyone. I'm Francesco Federico, Chief Marketing Officer, UK and Ireland at JLL. And I'm very happy to be here with you today as we'll uh, discuss uh, how we use the, a marketplace experience uh, to effectively enable and accelerate uh, our CRM uh, adoption program. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, when we looked at our ecosystem, and this was back a couple of years ago, we realized that uh, we didn't really have uh, a consistent way to go to market when it came to investment opportunities. And uh, to be honest, even our competitors, although they had um, platforms uh, um, I'm, I'm sort of consolidating investment opportunities together, were not delivering this uh, at scale and with a compelling user experience. And so this was a tremendous uh, sort of opportunity we saw in the market. Uh, there were indeed uh, players, uh, uh, aggregators, so sort of unbranded players that were doing this very well, but none in the industry was uh, uh, sort of uh, consolidating in one single place all investment opportunities from all over the world uh, uh, for investors to browse uh, and, uh, and engage with. Um, at the same time, internally, we had a problem. Uh, the problem was that we went through a fairly a substantial transformation initiative. And uh, um, uh, thanks to this initiative, we were able to implement Salesforce as our global uh, CRM uh, for capital markets. Uh, but the reality was is that our producers, our brokers across the business were not uh, as, uh, as quick as embracing it and adopting it as we would, uh, would have hoped. So essentially, the way we looked at this was, well, on the one hand, we have uh, an issue around the CRM implementation and adoption, in particular adoption, I would say. So how do we get our business, our sales teams to use our CRM platform? And externally, we had a challenge around not having a comprehensive investor marketplace experience. And so the idea was, and the opportunity really uh, was why don't we create a, a digital product that can at the same time drive CRM adoption while also ultimately drive growth for the business uh, by you know, creating a world-class marketplace for capital markets listings. So we went through a journey of understanding uh, and understand sort of what do we want to drive here. And so again, looking externally at the investor marketplace, I think what we really wanted to achieve was to um, sort of create a one-stop shop hub for our investors, where you could go, as I mentioned, in one platform where you could see all the opportunities, local, regional, and global, literally catering to all the different personas uh, in uh, our investor landscape. You know, you, as you can imagine, you might have like a fund manager that is interested in real estate uh, uh, globally and really open to purchase real estate as an asset class uh, globally based on some uh, investment criteria. But at the opposite end of the spectrum, you might also have like the high um, uh, sort of net worth individual that is, yes, indeed looking at real estate as an investment opportunity, but it perhaps has a more local approach and wants to, to invest in a specific geography. So we really wanted one single platform that could cater to all these different needs. Uh, we also wanted uh, a platform that could have uh, sort of a private experience, if you want, because especially for our sort of top tier hero deals, uh, those don't really hit the market until they are sort of, you know, showcased to a number of preferred investors and the known clients. And uh, so we really wanted to make sure we were uh, sort of building a platform with uh, a personal area where uh, you know, uh, you know, clients could uh, access confidential opportunities only available to them and to a restricted number number of, of clients. And then obviously we really wanted consistent experience. We wanted we wanted a fast, uh, easy to use interface uh, uh, for our, for our clients. We also wanted to uh, accelerate the the deal cycle really and making sure that through a digital product, it would be ultimately faster to, to, to conclude deals 
because obviously this goes in the interest of our clients that want you know their stock to move quickly but also in the interest of our investors uh, who obviously want you know to get their hands on the best deals as soon as they can so they can sort of rub the rewards quickly uh, and uh, and finally we also wanted to really build a product that was not only mobile first but also that had uh, uh, a capability of sort of understanding what the consumption of the website is, how clients, how prospects are interacting with the website so that we can iterate the interface, iterate the look and feel to really adapt uh, to the changing uh, uh, sort of needs uh, of our prospects and clients. And then if, you, if we then turn internally and look at, you know, uh, if you want uh, the the, the, the alternative agenda for the reason why of this marketplace, we really wanted to show our sales and business colleagues that there were tangible benefits by adopting our global CRM capability. It was not just for the sake of a transformation program that we, we were asking them to adopt CRM. It was because the, we really saw tangible benefits in, uh, in, adopting, uh, in adopting Salesforce. But the question was, how do we make sure we tell a story to our brokers and producers that really will convince them and, and get them on board? So first of all, uh, uh, they, they do indeed value a global and consistent customer experience for clients. And so by showcasing Salesforce as the only platform through which investment opportunities, real estate listings, would eventually get on the website, on this marketplace, was obviously the number one driver. So the main proposition was if if you want your investment opportunity to be showcased in this new shiny digital marketplace we have just built, you have to put the listing on Salesforce. There is no other way. And obviously this was by itself already an incredible, uh, incredible added benefit. But then what we really wanted to go was, was to really go beyond just, you know, a, a, a listing website we as i said we really wanted to build a marketplace and so what we started building in the platform were features around for instance uh, uh, e-signing e so allowing uh, prospects and clients to sign ndas for them to get access to due diligence documents for instance pertaining the investment opportunity and so really what we really wanted to do was to deliver a transactional ecosystem, meaning that we were trying to digitize as many steps of the deal flow process as possible so that we would remove friction, especially on the, on the, on the client's end, make sure that clients and prospects could progress as far as possible in the deal flow and only interact uh, with a with a human really with a with a with a sales uh, rep or a producer only when really needed and equally this was perceived as a benefit uh, with our uh, looking at internally uh, with our in conversations with our business colleagues because of course they want to have that personal connection of course they cherish that human touch they deliver uh, with our clients but equally they did they really don't like wasting time sending out NDAs PDF documents. Uh, Etc. That's that's really low low value, low business value activity, and they really welcome the opportunity for this marketplace to take away some of the low value activities and put these uh, in the hands of uh, our clients. And then, as as I said, as you can see here, we were mirroring the benefits for the client as also benefits for the business. You know, also the business wanted to show only confidential opportunities to select number of individuals. Um, there was obviously a desire to customize the overall experience also from the sales perspective. And so there was really, if you want, a sweet spot of shared alignment between what we wanted to deliver for our clients with what we thought the business uh, needed and, and, and ultimately wanted. And all of this obviously, as I said, was underpinned by um, strong uh, sort of uh, CRM capability that we implemented in Salesforce. So at the end of the day, uh, what we were able to produce was uh, this holistic digital marketplace, which we called the Investor Center, that was catering to all investor needs. Uh, in one single platform, we were giving access to a pool of global, regional, and local investors 
uh, to vetted global investments uh, in a very sort of liquid and streamlined transactional platform. We're completely frictionless. We were also able to unlock cross-selling opportunities for the business, which again unearthed even further the benefits of adopting a CRM solution because no cross-selling was easy you know, before using a single uh, CRM platform because it's only by leveraging a, a sort of a common, a common layer that you can spot and connect the dots and really spot those opportunities between capital markets, for instance, and corporate financing, et cetera. Uh, and really not only obviously unlock more value for our clients, but ultimately earning more fees for us as a company as well. We were also able to provide access to legal and financial documentation that obviously has a fairly sophisticated you know, degree of security we need to cut off for through the platform, through the digital marketplace. Um, and in doing so, thanks to MyGLL, the protected area you know, behind login, we were also able to deliver a truly personalized investor experience. So out of all these properties, whereas if you browse on the GLL Investor Center, you see we really span from like, you know, a local shop, a local Starbucks uh, a shop in the, in the outskirts of Albuquerque in New Mexico up to a skyscraper in, uh, in one Asia square in Singapore. So really the spectrum of investment opportunities is incredibly broad. And thanks to a personalized uh, investor capability, we're actually able to uh, really showcase the only the investment opportunities that make sense to you as an investor. So we don't waste your time or your screen real estate with you know properties that are not in line with your investment um, uh, strategy. Uh, and then obviously we were also keen on accessing data across multiple. Uh, sources and really making sure that we were getting the entire stock portfolio. And this is another thing we achieved. And finally, uh, we really wanted to sort of drive uh, uh, sort of uh, revenues. And uh, uh, obviously, we still partner with uh, aggregators. It's still very important for a company like JLL to be visible, even in third party aggregators. And we're still investing uh, with those partners. But equally, we really wanted to deliver a branded experience for two reasons mainly, to hyper-simplify. The first reason is obviously branding. We really want to make sure that the brand comes true and, uh, and that our, our clients and prospects are immersed uh, in the brand experience. And to this extent, for instance, uh, we really built uh, a content experience around the marketplace featuring articles, thought leadership, research pieces that are unique to JLL and they really inform the deal flow and they make the, de the deal flow, if you want, less transactional, less focused on just transacting and more, if you want, strategic. Uh, yes, there is the transactional element to the, uh, to the investor center because it is a marketplace after all, but equally, there is a very rich content experience that is unmatched uh, if you look at what happens on, uh, on aggregators. And the second reason why we wanted to sort of, you know, take some traffic away from aggregators is because obviously from a fee perspective, it's a higher margin opportunity for us to deal directly on our own platform rather than, you know, having to share fees with, uh, with third parties. So if we now look for a minute at the technology we used to enable all this, we really sort of joined up the best in class technology uh, that, has, that is out there in the market, I believe, to achieve this. And uh, almost uh, the tech experience mirrors our business uh, sort of experience, where we, from a business side, we really wanted to deliver something that clearly joined the client needs with the business needs. And the same, if you look at the tech uh, uh, we did with the, from, a, from a technology perspective. So on the CRM side, as I already mentioned, we implemented Salesforce as our global um, uh, capability for CRM, and from an experience perspective, uh, meaning from a, from not just from a presentation layer from the website, the marketplace, you know, user experience and, uh, and presentation layer, but also for the personalization engine, uh, we use the Adobe Experience Manager. So really, two interconnected experiences, a deep connection between Salesforce and the Adobe Experience Manager allowed us to deliver that seamless uh, sort of integration between investment opportunities and online customer experience and vice versa 
thanks to Adobe Experience Manager, we're able to collect uh, usage data, understand how our prospects and clients were interacting with the marketplace, and then funnel this information down into Salesforce so that the sales team actually now know before they engage with the lead what that lead has actually done and consumed on the website. And again, back to my point around content, I'm not just talking about interaction with the listings, with the product itself. I'm also talking about interactions with the content. For instance, which research they were most interested in, which thought leadership they consumed the most, because that obviously will give away some uh, some cues about uh, you know what is their um, sort of investment profile. And if you think about the cookie-less future, we are all sort of you know we uh, sort of you know that that's uh, looming you know uh, down the line in the in the coming months. It's going to be incredibly important to build this first-party data. And, uh, and, uh, and so having an intelligent presentation layer that can capture all this behavioral data is incredibly important to us. And then both Salesforce and AEM, Explorer Adobe Experience Manager, they all sat uh, on a very solid foundation from a marketing automation perspective we have built over the years, uh, leveraging Oracle Eloqua that takes care of all our direct digital communications or, you know, simply put, our newsletters. So both from a presentation perspective as well as from a CRM perspective, so both the business and the marketing teams together are using the same newsletter platform in Eloqua and uh, send out, obviously, communication that are relevant and timely through that platform. The reason why I put Eloqua here is because I want us to stress that it's not only a reactive platform we use to reach out to clients, but also, again, is an automated delivery channel that is informed uh, uh, with the investor profile that is built in Salesforce and the user behavior that is captured on Adobe Experience Manager. And finally, the way we, bring, we brought everything to life was a mix between uh, in-house development and, uh, and content management. So really, on the, on the one hand, we had obviously a very strong engineering team in completely uh, sort of working in-house in partnership with our uh, Adobe and Salesforce uh, development team. Together with the marketing team, in particular the content marketing team, who was responsible for creating the content that informed the overall uh, uh, marketplace experience. So uh, if you look at, at this, again, zooming out a little bit away from just the investor center, and you look at the whole of the ecosystem from a marketing technology perspective, you would find that we obviously invested uh, uh, quite significantly on marketing automation. Uh, not just, you know, marketing automation is obviously an umbrella name. It's not just newsletters. It's not just Lockway. It's also everything else we do with Adobe Experience Manager, everything else we do around the 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 uh, sort of uh, optimization of our marketing programs because we really try to move to automation uh, uh, and make sure that uh, our marketeers focus on this high, uh, high value strategic hero initiatives while the bread and butter hygiene always on marketing execution uh, is, um, you know, entirely automated, really. So still obviously delivering a high level of quality and relevance at scale, but automatically without having uh, to engage with our marketing teams. We also wanted a modern platform, and we, I think we achieved that. We, uh, I didn't mention it just in the interest of time, but we implemented a, a, a sort of a cust an online customer service, a chatbot with then connection to a manned um, sort of backend supporting uh, supporting lead management, scoring, and and routing. Uh, all of that again done uh, in a mix of uh, intelligent technologies, automated chatbots, and human interaction to sort of you know to close the deal, to to close the lead, and make sure that that is passed on uh, uh, warm uh, to the business uh, for, for for the business to follow up. And then from an optimization perspective, really approach we really approach this uh, with an iterative mindset and really wanted to make sure that we were really uh, sort of dri uh, dri uh, driving a. A, a, a sort of a always on a b testing if you want uh, kind of experience uh really trying to uh, optimize uh, all the journeys uh, almost on a on a on a weekly basis
And so very quickly, how did we do this? So just, you know, how do we move from an MVP up to a scale product that is now live across more than 20 markets globally? So we started very small, still relevant. So we started in July 2019 launching in Singapore an alpha version with basic features. But what's interesting is that the product was already global. So although the actual marketplace was only accessible through the GLL Singapore website, once you actually went there, you would see, you would see listings uh, from, from all over the world. It was, so the CRM was plugged in globally at the very beginning. But what we tried to do was to limit the number of users actually interacting with the platform because we wanted to stress test the features, understand what was important, and stress test the systems as, as a whole. And Singapore was the perfect uh, starting point because obviously it's a, it's a, uh, uh, for our investors, an English-speaking country, it's a small enough uh, not to sort of break anything from a tech perspective, but it's also big enough to be relevant, especially from a capital markets perspective. It's an incredibly uh, vibrant uh, uh, city state. And uh, then we refined the alpha and we launched uh, still only in Singapore at the end of, of, of 2019, a beta with a refined interface. And then in early 2020, we really we really started the global rollout. So in the first quarter of the year, we launched uh, the United States of America and Germany, who are sort of two of our biggest global markets. And we also added new features. Uh, the most important one was the MyGLL feature, the confidential that allowed us to uh, showcase confidential listings. And then as the year went on, we really took the opportunity to launch uh, as many markets as we could. We gave a priority to English-speaking countries just because it was easier. So we went on with the UK, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong. And then we started on with other key markets in different languages like France. And then finally, by Q3 2020, we effectively completed the rollout uh, by launching Southern Europe, Northern Europe, Southeast Asia, the Baltics, and Japan. And as we were launching new markets, we were also obviously refining the interface and adding new features like deal rooms and new, new lead management capabilities. What's interesting here to note is that we actually leveraged the, the disruption caused by the pandemic as an opportunity to accelerate the launches because the business, obviously, all the capital markets came, came, came to a halt throughout the pandemic effectively. And so what we did was really trying to leverage all the time that our producers you know, had... Uh, in not having to deal with deal making to actually focus them on adopting the technology, train them on how the marketplace worked, train them on Salesforce. And, uh, and it worked very well because as we now reopen you know, our, our deal flow, they are now strong with this incredible marketplace and incredible capability we're built for them. Uh, at a time where you would not probably associate 2020 as a year for investment, but actually this is what we did. We saw 2020 as an opportunity to get our house in order and build a platform that would help the business accelerate after, after the, the crisis. So, so far the results as we wrap up, as I said, we built a holistic portfolio online that showcases all opportunities uh, in one single place. Uh, I think we are quite proud with the innovation in process we brought to the company. Uh, now we have digital NDA signing. We have digital document access in complete service. Previously, previously it was a fairly cumbersome process. You had to reach out to the to the sales team. The sales team would get back to you via email. Now it's all done in service. Incredible NDA and, 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 and NPS scores from clients telling us they're very, very happy with the service experience, but equally our, our business are telling us we're very happy because now we are interacting with our clients only when we can add real value in consulting them in the best investments uh, rather than you know, interacting with them to send out you know, PDFs and get the signature on NDA. So really focusing the human touch on the critical phases of the transaction journey. And then obviously, a deep front-end and back-end integration. Uh, I think this has been for sure JLL first. For the first time, we were really able to in integrate end-to-end -end, uh, the CRM platform, so the business, the sales teams, with the presentation layer, so the marketing teams and the content marketing teams, and, uh, and also deliver an end-to-end line-to-revenue experience so that with lead management, scoring leads, 
uh, routing leads properly, following up on leads, and then reporting on the outcomes. So now, essentially, for every single dollar we put in the in the in the demand generation in digital traffic acquisition for the investor center, we can then, after a few months, because obviously the deal flow you know takes 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 quite some time, but after a few months, we can know we know exactly how many fees we have generated out of that marketing investment. So there is a very clear and sharp line to revenue. And finally, we have laid the foundations for a full-fledged capital markets marketplace. Uh, uh, today, obviously, the focus is pretty much on commercial. Uh, but, you know, the product, I mean, the, the, we could really spread the, pro the product across all asset types if we want to, in, uh, because of the agility uh, of the platform itself. I hope this was helpful. And, uh, yeah, I thank you very much for your attention.